Okay. Hello. Let's give it a second here. Wait for things to boot up. We're live. Minus about three seconds or so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna chill out here until we get to the official start time and uh, set things up. Make sure everything's in order. What's up, Akib? Welcome back. Thanks for uh, thanks for pinging me there. Always appreciated. Okay. Um, let's do a technical check here. Okay. Here we are. One thirty. Point in time. Uh, let's begin. So, uh, welcome everyone. Um, so today, I guess uh, I'm going to talk a bit about that case study that we're all working on, which is due on Monday. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the things that I thought were interesting or potentially useful for you guys uh, on the, a little bit on like the kind of technical side and, and also on the, the interpretation side um, for the US, okay, the, the one country you can't choose. Uh, so I'll go over that for the US and then um, hopefully that'll help you out. Uh, in your studies of other countries. So let's do that. And then after that, um, if, if I don't, if I run out of time, then I run out of time. If otherwise, if we finish that up, which I think we will, um, we can look back, maybe do a problem or two in, in, uh, in the textbook, Brummer um, and someone else, I forget their name, textbook. Uh, we can go over a problem or two there. Okay. Um, Cool. All right. So here we are. Let me switch to the, the browser view. This the course website. Uh, you can see, I don't know if I mentioned this, the Twitch and YouTube links here. Now I put those up. Um, obviously, you know where Twitch is since you're here uh, for YouTube when, once, when I archive things, uh, which usually happens within a, a day or two. Um, this should do that. So for my YouTube, I have all of my classes in like just my one channel. So you know, check out, you want to check out my grad classes. That'd be cool. Dig the blue links. Yeah, I, I decided to update. They used to be gray. I think I went for blue, like a, like a nice neon color. So thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, so this one, this link here is to the like playlist for this class so that you'll just see like that this class is a playlist and you can go through it. Um, <clears throat> you know, check out grad classes. Those are also up on the other playlists. Okay. So um, yeah, you even got the mouse over. It goes a little bit darker blue. Uh, some, you know, basic CSS and HTML skills there. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then we got the case study down here. Um, 313, that's right. Yeah, Monday. Okay. On Blackboard, um, I still need, I think I still need to create that. For Blackboard, um, maybe you've done it before, but to, to submit, you know, I'll put up a, a thing that says like case study and it'll look like possibly it's just to get the PDF or whatever the assignment, but also there will be a submission upload, you know, uh, form there that you can use to, all right. Um, now in terms of the problem. So I'm going to go through it a little bit. I'll, I'll kind of just show you how I would do this, uh, for number one. So we're basically, you know, we're, we're saying, okay, we're going to go with the U S all right. We're, number one is basically doing kind of growth analysis growth, or growth decomposition stuff or attribution. If you want to call it that, uh, to say, you know, how much of growth is coming from technology TFP here, Z from capital and from labor, okay? And then kind of adding in that human capital component, seeing what changes, right? Uh, welfare analysis is the second part. That's that's the Jones beyond GDP business. Um, I realized that the the Jones beyond GDP spreadsheet that he, he gives that, that I put on the website doesn't actually have the evolution of um, all those metrics it just has the levels today and then the growth 
since uh, 1970. So what I would, yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about that. I mean, you can you can do a lot of the Jones analysis using the data from question one, the pen world tables. Um, you can construct it. You can't construct everything like the life expectancy, but you can get a lot of it. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about that. Okay. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start out in, in spreadsheet land. Excel, not exactly Excel, but kind of, you know, Google Sheets. Um, and then I'll, I'm actually going to jump to Python just because it's like I can do more stuff quick, more quickly and show you different things. And it's just, it, I'll spend less time on stream or like in class uh, mucking around with spreadsheet cells. Okay. Um, and then I think it'll, implicitly it's a, it's an advertisement for, for using Python or R to see what, what kind of the, the level of the new abilities that you, you get when you, when you move to that. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right. So, so for number one, uh, we're starting with the pen world tables. Okay. That's pop back here. Pen world tables version nine. There's an Excel file here, pwg90.xls. Actually there's a 9.1, which goes up a few more years in terms of data coverage. Um, you can, if you just search for pen world tables, there's a standard like university of Groningen or something. Uh, yeah, pen world tables, you just, just the first thing if you search for pen world tables and then just click on Excel, it's a direct download PWT 91. Okay. So if you want to get the new one, it's probably best to, to get the new one. Okay. Uh, and that's, yeah, so Groningen, uh, university of Groningen in Denmark, somewhere around Denmark. Okay. So, um, that's, yeah, I think that's right. So, um, you, yeah, but 9.0 works fine too if you want to download from here. Now, uh, that's an Excel file. You could open it in Excel. I don't actually have Excel because I run Linux. I'm kind of a Linux zealot. Um, and then they, they have Libra Office, Libra Office uh, or Open Office, which is pretty good. But honestly, either one, like they, they produce very ugly graphs. I've never liked the look of, of Excel graphs. Um, so, but Google Sheets is actually pretty good. I think you can you can do everything in Google Sheets uh, if need be. Okay, so um, we got a bit of a clipping issue. I need to resize my browser window. How do I? Wait, so I do this. Give me a second so I can make sure that we, ac we can actually see stuff. Okay, so if I do that, I need to, I need to actually go into my streaming studio here and, and uh, modify one thing. What just happened? We want to go to this one and we want to decrease that margin there. Okay, we can see the row names. That's always good. And then let's do that on the other side here too. We're just going to show you the whole window. Radical transparency. Okay, um, and then I guess we don't want to do it. All right, let's, let's, okay, that's good enough. All right, so now you guys can see everything. Okay, so this is, this is pen world table. This is like open in a browser tab. Like up here is my tabs, but I don't want you, I don't want you guys seeing my bookmarks. Uh, so I clipped that out. Um, so uh, this, but this is just Google Sheets. If you, uh, if you go to Google Sheets and just, you can upload on the, like in the corner, there's like an upload button. Uh, you can upload an Excel file and, and, and do it in there. So I, I don't know, I find Google Sheets is like getting better and better over time. Uh, Google is pretty hit or miss with everything, but they managed to do a good job on Google Sheets. So. Yeah. Um, all right. And just let me know if I end up pointing at things behind my head. Okay. So, uh, so, so what do we have here? So basically there's three panes in the pen world tables data. First pane is like, this is the pen world tables by Feenstra, Inclair and, and Timmer. Okay. Um, and, uh, the second one is a legend. Okay. So this is actually, this is important. This is telling you what do all these variables name mean? And then the third one is the data, which is really big, which has like, column names and then like country Aruba is the first alphabetically year. Okay. But this, this thing is a beast. All right. So there's like tens or thousands, tens of thousands of, uh, data points. So usually they go from 1950 to today. So that's almost 70 years for probably what, 150 countries I'd bet. Uh, so that's like, what is that? Wait, 70 times 150, 1500. It's like 10,000 probably. Okay. Almost 10,000 rows. Okay. But you're only going to be interested in, you know, 70 of them, which correspond to your country. So that makes things easier. Okay. But each of the rows, so, so basically what I'm saying is each row has 
the country, whether in, you know there's a country code, these three digit codes, they can be somewhat inscrutable. The name Aruba, okay, we know that. Currency is not really important. They have the guild apparently, and then the year. So, but really what, what characterizes a row is the country name and the year. And then it has a bunch of like stuff like the GDP, capital, everything like that for that. And then you can see sometimes it's missing. We don't know much about Aruba between the years of 1950 and 1969, okay? But then 1970 comes along and all of a sudden we know stuff about Aruba. For the US, we, we know stuff from 1950 because better uh, data coverage there. Okay, so um, so that's one thing. Uh, that's the structure of the data. Okay, so it's it's country year as the row, and then whatever we're looking at is the index as the column. Okay, and those columns are defined here. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Basically, there's the ID stuff, which I just talked about. Um, then there's um, real GDP. Okay, uh, here's um, so this is like there's multiple different ways you can define. GDP. Okay, so there's expenditure side, which is looking at what people are spending. So you look at their consumption, investment, or sorry, consumption, savings, um, and and things like that. Okay, or government consumption. And then uh, there's the uh, that's the expenditure side. Then there's the output side where you're looking at what's actually being produced. Um, in principle, these things should be equal to each other, but you know, data measurement is not always perfect, and so they, there is some difference between them just due to measurement error. Okay. Or perhaps a conceptual error. Okay, so um, that's one thing. And then the other thing is, <clears throat> there's the real nominal dimension. The nominal is just like what do you see on the on the number when you add everything up, in terms of the currency that's being used. So the U.S. dollar or the Aruban guilder, for instance. Um, and then the the real side would be once you try and you try and account for the fact that currencies sort of change in their intrinsic value over time. Um, and there's like a bunch of different ways to do that. One is chained PPP. So PPP stands for purchasing power parity, and it tries to measure sort of how much you can buy with that in sort of a global sense. Okay, so like how many Big Macs can you buy with that or something, you know, some kind of globally traded uh, good like that. Okay, um, I guess Big Macs probably, they're not globally traded, but they're globally consumed. Uh, I don't think you, you don't really ship Big Macs too much. Okay, so, um, yeah, but uh, so you can you can look at that chain PPPs and the, but there's many different ways to account for inflation. Okay, and then so um, <clears throat> yeah, so 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 what do we have? So this is real GDP expenditure output. We got population. That's always good. Employment. That's the number of people that are actually working. Okay, so the ratio of employment to population is your is your your uh, labor force I guess labor force participation rate almost, uh, which is how many people are working. You got a lot of old people. Like Japan, you're going to have a low employment to population ratio. That's going to make you look bad in some ways, but it's not like bad. I mean, old people are okay, right? Um, so uh, that's one thing. Also, if you heard the term dependency ratio, that's kind of like the inverse of that notion is that there's a lot of people uh, per person that's actually working age. Okay, that's pe countries with high, lots of old and young people have a high dependency ratio. That means you've got more mouths to feed and less people to do the work, right? So that can be make things tough sometimes. Um, next up, average hours worked. That's pretty clear. That's a yearly thing. Okay, so that's going to be some probably somewhere between one and two thousand hours. If you think about, you work uh, forty hours a week, fifty weeks a year. Let's say you get two two weeks of vacation. Um, that's two thousand hours. Okay, most people don't actually work two thousand hours, and certainly on average, since not everyone works full time, no country I believe gets up to two thousand. Uh, some of the superstars, I think, are, are Korea and Japan, um, not surprisingly, and Greece does really well somehow. Um, I guess they work a lot. Okay, so, uh, yeah. And then other countries are, are much lower, okay? Uh, human capital index, this is, <clears throat> this is complex. It's not just the years of schooling is trying to account for how much you actually do in those years and potentially even how much you actually do in those years on a country by country basis. Okay, so, um, you know, different countries have different like sort of schooling qualities, okay? Even amongst developed countries. Um, I don't know where the US stands. I don't really remember doing that much in high school, honestly, but you know, uh, th there's variation, of course, there's variation within the US and, and, and so on. So uh, it's not gonna be a perfect index, but it's, it's something that people put some effort into, okay? And so we'll, we'll treat it as sort of like the best that we can do. 
Um, <clears throat> that's going to be basically H, the human capital in our model. Okay, so then we got, that's real stuff. Okay, then we have current price stuff. Okay, so this is, um, I'm going to say, this is like the, this is the GDP at the time that it happened. Okay, so this is like less accounted, this, this is doing less inflation accounting, okay? But it's basically the same thing as, um, you know, a consumption. This is like the actual amount of consumption. So here this is, um, if you remember, we, in the Jones stuff, uh, we looked at that consumption to output ratio, like Norway had a ton of output, but they didn't consume that much of it because a lot of their output was from uh, oil, North North Sea oil uh, reserves that they were extracting and they just didn't just blow all the money. They actually saved it. So their, their C over Y factor was low and it partially counteracted their huge GDP per capita. So that's what consumption is, is going to help us do that. The difference between consumption and, and actual output. Okay. Um, we got absorption is consumption plus investment. Uh, same expenditure side, GDP, output side, GD, real GDP. Okay. And then um, capital stock. All right. Um, so this is this is the capital stock. This is an estimate of the value of the total amount of capital in the economy. So that would include um, real like buildings and real estate in addition to like factories and machines and stuff like that. So any sort of like fixed installed capital is going to in the value of that is going to be included in here um and the it's a little bit tricky because you see how, how much is a piece of capital worth that's a tricky thing to say uh and it changes over time you know if you if you look at housing as capital right when 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 you have a property tax you need to know how much you're going to tax someone you can see if it's a 10 of 10 5 percent let's say it's a 5 percent property tax i don't actually know what the rates are if it's a 5% property tax, you need to know how much the property is worth to levy the tax. Um, to do that, basically, they have this thing called assessment where they assess the value of the house. But it's like, how do you, it's, you know, you can look at the sale price, but let's say you bought the house 30 years ago. How do you assess the value? Well, that's that's tricky. And they have these formulas, which are semi-arbitrary. Okay. They're also like politically manipulated, right? Because people don't want to pay taxes. So, um that's one area where it's like a tricky problem to, to assess uh, value of capital. The way they do it here in the Penwell tables is usually what's called the perpetual inventory method, where they look at, you can see kind of the flow in, you can see when they buy new capital, okay? You know that capital depreciates over time. Think about a car, it breaks down over time. Um, so you can look at the flows, you can kind of say like, the value goes down by like 10% every year, and then calculate what should be the value. now. There, there, there's a little bit of randomness because sometimes it depreciates faster or slower and you don't know that, okay? Or maybe it varies based on the type of capital. So um, it's not perfect, but this is what they use as the base estimate. Now, capital services is like a different measure. That's where they, they go a little bit more hardcore and trying to figure out, okay, how much, how fast do these different types of capital depreciate um, and stuff like that and be, do a more nuanced analysis, okay? We're going to use regular capital for now, but you know, like we, you can use either one, you know, give each, if you want to give each of them a shot, see what happens, you know, be my guest. TFP, um, we're going to calculate that ourselves anyway, so we don't need to use their TFP estimates. Okay. So let's just ignore that. Um, we could compare them. Um, okay. And then the other stuff, this is all. If you look at the difference here, um, is... so there's, uh, this is, so you see here it's real GDP and chain PPPs and here's real GDP and constant national prices. So this is just like different methods of um, adjusting for inflation. Okay, so it's, yeah, I mean, you know, it's sort of arbitrary which one you use. Um, so this one, but this has very similar. So GDP, consumption, consumption plus investment. Okay, so it's like, you know, just not including uh, net exports in, in government. Um, spent, or no, not including net exports. Okay, capital stock, capital services, all the same stuff, TFP. Okay, so we'll probably use this actually. Okay, just because it's easier. 
right? The, mostly this stuff. Then you have like a labor share. That's the the share of income going to labor. Okay, that's that's important. We're going to need that. That's like al that's one minus alpha in our Cobb Douglas models. Okay, that's that's it ends up being one minus alpha, and it's usually in the range of sixty to sixty five percent for a country like the U.S. All right, um, appreciation. Yeah, the other stuff we don't really need. Okay, there's a bunch of other stuff. You can ignore it if you want. Okay, um, but there's a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so let's let's um, let's let's dig into the data now that we've kind of went over the uh, variable definitions. Okay, so now you can see all those variables are here. If you want to get a variable, you know you need to go here. I want real GDP there. That's our GDP NA. Boom, go over to data. It should be somewhere over here. Our GDP NA. That's going to be column S. All right, so that's going to be the lookup method there. Okay. Um, all right, so we want to we want to do this for the U.S. Okay, so like I said, there's a lot of rows here. We need to get all, all the way down to U. Okay. Even Google Sheets has a little trouble with this. You can see we're already at row ten thousand. We haven't even hit the U.S. Okay. Don't tell me you're not singing the alphabet in your head. Okay. T U. We're almost there. Okay, we're in the U's. USA. There we go. Um, okay, now uh, we so what we want to do is get from you know this first row USA 1950 all the way we got up to 1917. So we just want to get that chunk there. Okay, now you can you can select rows by clicking fire on the left here. So we can just do that. Hold down the old shift key. Um, okay, we got a question. Let me just finish this up. Um, so should we be concerned about conversion between variables or did the data chain everything in 2011? So for this, for real GDP NA, um, so this, this is saying, this is real GDP at um, uh, US dollar 2011 prices. So we can kind of, um, we can compare between years and, and countries because they're sort of denominated in the same units, okay? Um, yeah, so we can, if you take, if you take stuff from this, this section here, national accounts variables, our GDP, NA, and friends, uh, then you should be good. Okay. Um, all right, so we've got USA selected here. I'm gonna do the old control C. Now, uh, yeah, and then we can just, let's let's create a new sheet here. We've got the sheets here on the bottom. Let's rename it so we remember, remember what it is. Let's call it USA, all right. Um, now, I'm gonna paste it here. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the second row because I'm gonna bring over those column variables. Okay, so it's like a second, but it pays everything. It all worked. Okay, um, and while I'm here, we want to know what those columns actually are. So let's just go up to the top and copy row number one, and put that in here. Okay, boom. And you can you can insert and delete rows if you want with the right click there. So let's make it bold. Okay. Um, okay, so then we got this. Uh, now let's we don't need these we know it's the us and we know what the us dollar is so let's delete these columns okay um so now we just have country code which is always the us in this case year and then a bunch of stuff all right and here you can see the us has very good coverage for this data all right so um that's that's okay so that's step one is we got to sort of slice out what we need so we don't have to deal with the ten thousand row uh sheet every time and you can see there's all this stuff over here okay and down here all right so um Okay, so then if we're doing purely in spreadsheets, um, the way I'm going to do it is just make a new sheet, which is going to be called growth. Okay, so here I'm going to put in the growth decompositions. You can reference in spreadsheets, you know, you can reference cells, and you can reference even, you can reference cells uh, into in the other sheets. So I can reference cells in USA, for instance. Okay, so, um, well, what do we want to do? Uh, so first we need, let's, be, you know, be careful about what we're doing with our columns. I'm gonna make these bold too. Okay, so we're gonna have year. That's still gonna be a thing. Okay, and I'm just gonna bring that over. I just call it the whole column. Okay, so we bring over the year column because that's like our index now. Like we're always in the U.S., but now we have to keep track of the row which corresponds to our year. All right, so copy that over. I'm just Control C, Control D in here. Um, now we want. Uh, let's go to the legend. Okay, I'm hopping around a little bit here, but we wanna we wanna get. We want to do this growth decomposition. Okay, we got the data. We want to do the growth decomposition. 
uh, first, let's think about what are we what are we doing with this decomposition? All right, so um, yeah, so we can do that. Uh, let's let's set up the this, the whiteboard. Okay, um, so growth decomposition. Decomposing growth, accounting into different sources. Okay, so remember that in the in the problem set or the case study uh, uh, document um, said use this production function and, and and perform a growth decomposition with that production function. Okay, so first we we kind of know like if we just think about it in terms of growth, we know how to turn this into a growth rate equation, right? So we say okay. GY, okay, we, if we use our rules of growth rates, GY on the left should be equal to, to the sum of the growth rates from each of these contributions. So it should be GY should be GZ plus basically alpha GK. So it's like the, the growth rate of this is alpha times the growth rate of K, GK. And we add that in because they're multiplied together. And then plus one minus alpha GL, okay? So that's, that's how we turn that into a, a growth equation. Okay, now we're dealing with real data here. Okay, so we need we want to be careful about um, uh, how we compute these growth rates. Okay, so one thing you can do is we, remember we know that the growth rate of like x is x dot over x. It's the rate of change of x over x. It's also and which is also just by like math and calculus equal to the derivative of the log of x. Okay, so the growth rate is just the derivative of the log. The log brings into proportional terms, and that change over time in proportional terms is your growth rate. Okay, so it's a natural log, of course. So, um, so it's, the growth rate basically is the derivative of the, the log. So the way we can do it here is so we're, we we can't really look at like a derivative. That's a continuous notion, but we can look at the change from year to year. Okay, so. What we're going to say, okay, I guess this is like a sidebar sort of, we're going to say that the growth rate of x is uh, approximately uh, equal to the log of x of like t plus 1 minus the log of xt. So we, look, we take the log and then look at the difference from year to year. That's going to approximately be the growth rate. If you think about it, it's like rise over run. The derivative is like the change, the rise divided the run. The run is just one year. So we just divide it by one. Okay. So this is a useful equation when you're actually computing growth rates. You can just take the log and then look at the difference. That's what I'm going to do. And it's approximately right for small, like from year to year. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> all right, cool. So then, so we're going to do that here. So we're going to calculate these growth rates using the difference in the log. Okay, so then, um, you know, we can do that for this. We have that capital measure. We have the GDP, why? We have population or employment or whatever, okay? Um, and then we're gonna back out by subtracting these two from GY to find GZ. We don't directly measure GZ, it's just kind of whatever is left over, whatever can't be explained by capital or labor, that changes in output, we're gonna attribute to GZ, okay? That's the plan. Um, so let's do it. Okay. Uh, so let's head back to the spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, so we want to basically, um, in terms of what we're going to use, okay, so we're going to use real GDP for output, our GDP NA. Okay. Um, we're going to, for capital, we're going we're gonna to use our NNA. So that's I don't know why they call it that, but that's the we're going to use a capital stock measure, and then we're going to use what we need to use a measure of employment or population. So, for for this, there's the question: Do we use population or do we use employment? You know, because if you think about like GDP per capita, you should probably use population because you want to know on average how much output is each person getting or how much income is each person getting. Um, but if you look at it, that's population. So if you look at employment, though. That really tells you like how productive people are, right? If you if you think about that production function, um, uh, I'm not. I think so. yeah, okay. If you think about that, about that production function, um, 
here uh it has l right so, so that should really be the number of people working right people that are that are alive but not working are not contributing to this production function directly so if we're looking at like a productivity notion we should probably just use employment so i'm going to say we should use employment okay so so we're going to do that so that's emp all right so we're using our gdpna rnna and emp those are our variables okay so let's keep that in mind all right, so that's 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 what we're gonna do here. Oops. So um, so let's call this. Okay, we're gonna map out. So we're gonna do a log output, which is gonna be log of our GDPNA. We're gonna do a log capital, and we're gonna do a log employment. Okay, so the, those are our goals. Okay, so how do we do log output? Okay, so we're we're looking for our GDPNA. That's over here, that's column Q. Okay, um, and we want to reference that. So what we can do here is, if you click on the cell, you press equals. Look up top here, you can see it's 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 also mirroring that. So you press equals, that means it's an equation. You're calculating something. And then you do log. Okay, and then we want to reference um, the USA sheet. So what you do is uh, like an exclamation point USA exclamation point USA. Okay, in this case. Um, and then we want to reference Q and we want to, we want to get Q2 actually. We want to get that second row and it even tells me that's 6.35, whatever, whatever. Okay. So we can boom, logify that. Okay. So that's giving us the log of exactly this cell, the log of 224-6944, which yeah, looks about right. Okay. Um, okay. Then we do the magic where we say, okay, take this lower corner here. This, this works in almost any spreadsheet program. And you just drag it down and it's like, figure out what I mean. Like just intelligently figure out what I mean. You can do it. Okay. And it does exactly what you expect. Q3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. Okay. So it extrapolates. It's smart. Okay. So this is giving us the whole log of that whole column. Okay. Um, so now we have log GDP. Okay. Um, now let's, let's do that for capital and employment. And then we'll look at doing the difference from year to year. Okay. So for capital, that's RNNA. That's column T. Okay. So we're gonna do equals log USA uh, T2, okay? Um, got that and then extrapolate it intelligently. Okay, so that gives us that log. And then finally, we want employment. So that's earlier on, that's uh, column F. And so we have log USA F2 there, extrapolate. Okay, so now we have it, we have, you know, for, for for 1950, which is row two, log output, log capital, log employee, and so on all the way down. Okay, so that's good. Um, we can uh, we can work with that. Okay, so so now um, let's we can calculate. Let's calculate the growth rates. Okay, so. Um, so, so we think we're going to do growth output, okay? With the growth output. So, so the thing is, you know, you're doing a difference from year to year, okay? So, in 1950, we well, we don't have data for 1949, so we're not going to be able to get a growth rate there, but we can do it for 51 and look at 51 minus 50, okay? So we're going to do equals. If you click on a cell, it'll put it in the equation for you. So equals B3 minus B2, just the difference, okay? And so that says we grew by 3.3 percent. Basically, that's what that means. Okay, um, 3.4 almost. So, and then we extrapolate that. That's going to do it intelligently too. It's going to increment like, you know, this is B3 minus B2. This is B4 minus B3 and so on. Okay, so it's smart like that. Um, okay, so then we can do the same thing uh, for capital and employment. Okay, um, this is going to be C2 minus C, no, C3 minus C2. Okay. Extrapolate, and this is going to be uh, D3 minus D2. Extrapolate. Okay, so now we got that. All right, so, I mean, that's cool. Um, it's even what we were looking for. All right, this auto saves, by the way. I always press Control S, but it, it just automatically saves anyway. So, um, okay, so now we want to, we have kind of what we were looking for. We have the growth rates. Okay, now these are not quite what we were looking for, though. 
because um uh why uh because we need to wait them okay remember where are we um we had a yeah, the whiteboard go to the whiteboard uh you know we don't want gk exactly we want alpha times gk we want one minus alpha times gl those are the true things that we're looking for and then gy is fine okay and we haven't dealt with gz yet so keep that in in the back of your mind okay um but we could we could just plot this and see what maybe we're interested in the growth rates of these things okay so let's do that so we can look at we're going to select these with control you do like a control click kind of thing select these four columns okay insert chart this is similar in excel um and i made a chart not a bad looking chart even okay um you can fiddle around with customizations here so so it, it's sort of smart it figured out we want to plot things year versus all this other stuff okay um there's some cool if you can maximize 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 it i think is, is a little better actually okay um okay so you can click on this and move it if you want all right um you can give it a name growth rates usa or something like that okay uh, you can't see that's true okay thank you um so i made that chart so basically you go let me do it again so you you click on year um yep okay so you click on year select these columns okay um and then do insert chart here okay and it'll sort of and so now you can see it'll figure out that you want to use year as your like x variable and then plot all the other stuff as a y variable i i assume it's just because it's the first one and you can change it, or maybe it's smart and is like, oh, year is obviously an X type variable. Okay. And then we can do like growth rates USA. Okay. So here, and then um, there's various things you can do to customize it. So you can like, you can make it like maximize chart, which makes it look like kind of a little bit more you know, using the space more efficiently. Okay. So here you can see from 1950 up until 2017. Okay um these growth rates and these are the raw growth rates so these aren't the contributions okay um and you you can see a couple things all right maybe you should and if you want to if you want to change it again you can go back to chart style and like maybe we don't like maximize okay we can. okay so you can do that so you, so you can see a couple things one is the capital growth is much more stable okay Capital is like a long, it's, it's a long running variable and it only changes when you do a new investment, when there's depreciation. That's one reason. The other reason is that we're not measuring it. Remember, we don't measure it perfectly. So if it was the case that a plant broke down, we basically wouldn't know. Okay. And, and or if a plant became useless because some export industry dried up, okay, we wouldn't know it necessarily. So, so that's why it's more stable, this orange line, which corresponds to capital output. You can see the 2008 recession there. Um, that's the biggest recession in this data series. Uh, and you can see other blips, 2000, early 90s, early 80s, 70s, kind of all over the place. Okay, so um, you can see that. And then kind of you know, employment mirrors that. Okay, you know, the, during a recession, there's a lot of unemployment. So that employment goes down. Okay, uh, that's pretty much always true. Okay, so... Um, so we can do that. That's, that's a pretty good chart. Okay. Now the, the problem with this chart is that you don't really get a sense of what's the contribution of each of these. I mean, you can kind of see, you can like the average growth rates and, and so on, but, but you don't necessarily really get a, a good look at that. Okay. So one thing you can do, it, well, there's two things that are missing. One is we haven't weighted these with alpha and one minus alpha. That's kind of critical. All right. Um, and then the other thing is maybe we want to look at this more in a cumulative sense to get an idea of how things changing over time. Cause it's hard to see from these growth rates. You can see how variable stuff is, but you can't see the cumulative effect. Okay. So I'm going to delete this. Okay. It was a good chart, but we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to delete it. Um, and, and look at something slightly different. Okay. So let's, let's insert a, a row here to the left here. Let's so, so the other thing is we don't have TFP yet. Okay. So we, we still need log TFP. All right, now remember, um, let's see. So remember that uh, 
how we defined TFP, right? So TFP, to go back to the whiteboard, is this residual here. So GZ, that growth in TFP, um, is GY minus alpha GK minus 1 minus alpha GL. Okay? All right, so, so actually, well, we... we uh, yeah, I mean the other thing is let me let me pop over the white paper here. A second. The, the other thing is that th this growth rate equation also is sort of because growth rates and logs are so linked intricately. Uh, this is also true in logs. So if you take the log of this equation, you get um, log of y is equal to the log of z plus alpha log k and then put it on here plus one minus alpha log L. Okay, so the kind of the same equation is true in logs. If you just take the logs and then when you when you differentiate this equation, that's that gives you the growth rate equation. Okay, so it's all about the, just the fact that growth rates and logs are, are kind of the same thing in some sense. Okay, so okay, now I'm going to remember to switch back. The uh, How can we implement that here? So that means that Okay, switch back again. One more thing. That means that um, you know this this log z. Okay, if we solve for log z, is log y minus alpha log k minus one minus alpha log l. Okay. So it's just solving for z, and then that's what we're gonna do. Okay. So then, well, what's what's alpha? That's the first, that's one thing we need to know. What's alpha? Okay, so um, we can get alpha. Uh, so alpha, remember, is is one minus the labor share. It's actually the capital share. Okay, so so we know that that one minus alpha a long time ago, a galaxy far far away, uh, we derived these labor shares. And we, so we know that like one minus alpha is W L over Y and alpha is R K over Y. We did that. That's basically like Cobb Douglas solo stuff. Okay. So this is the labor share, okay? Or as it's it's called literally LASH in the Penworld tables data, we can get that in the data. That gives us one minus alpha. We just do one minus that, and we get alpha. All right. So we can um, let's go over here. Okay. So we can we can do that. So so first of all, let's go back to our our legend. Okay, we want to get the labor share. Turns out we have that. This is made in, in you can't see, god damn it. Okay. Uh, we want to get the labor share. All right. Um, this in the legend, if we go to the legend, that's this here. Labor with you. This is a uh, European style. Labor. Um, L A B S H. That's our that's our target variable. Okay. Uh, we can we can go over and look at that somewhere way along in here. Right here, so you can see it's about, um, about fifty nine between fifty nine and sixty two percent. Okay, you know, uh, actually, like we could just plot it if we really want to. So let's let's select year and labor share. Okay, and then insert chart. Okay, that doesn't look like anything. This might this might be a case where it. Didn't work. Item can't be related. That's weird. Okay, so let's try it again. Let's maybe do it in B first. I think it's the order that you select them in, probably. That didn't. So we're gonna we're gonna select B, the year column. Then we're gonna select wherever labor share is. We lost it. There it is. Control. Click insert chart. Okay, it's confused. It's confused. Let's uh, let's set up this chart. X-axis is year. Series remove. There. Okay, that's much better. Year. Labor share. You can see it's super persistent. Okay, people people write people have written papers about the fact that this series is decreasing. It went from you know like 63, 64 to fifty nine. That's a paper apparently. Okay, so 
but yeah, that's that's a whole other story there. But um, you can see it's it's around 0.6. Okay, if you take the whole average here, you, you can do it in Excel. It's 0.62. Okay, so let's say we go average of um, x2 to x69, which is the last row there, uh, 61.99. So 62, basic 0.62 is like the average labor share. So let's use that. Okay, so we're going to use 0.62. Okay, so then if we do this here, uh, if we go to log TFP, we're going to say that log TFP is, where is GY, minus, sorry, log Y minus alpha log K minus one minus alpha log L. Okay, so and in fact, you know, so so we we determined here um, that this is equal to 0.62. So 62% of output goes to labor. That means that alpha should be one minus that, so 0.38. Okay, so it's it's the capital share is 0.38. The labor share is 0.62. That's what we're going to use. Okay. Um, all right. So then we get what? So we get log z is log y. That's b2 minus the capital share, which is 0.38, times uh, C2, minus 0.62, the labor share, uh, times uh, D2, which is the log employment. Okay, so that's what we're calling TFP. The units of TFP, we don't really know. I mean, it's not, not well defined. Okay, so all we care about is like the changes, the relative values. Okay. All right, so that's, that's our TFP there. Okay, and then you can look at growth in TFP, and that's going to be you know, e, E3 minus E2 extrapolated. Okay, so that's that's cool. Um, we can get that. And if you want, you can you know, do another analogous chart, which is going to be super crowded. But now you can see growth in TFP a little lower. Okay, so you can see that that's, that's a bit lower than the others. Uh, roughly as variable and corresponds to re uh, recessions. Okay, TFP goes down in 2008. Not as much, but but it goes down. It goes down in these other recessions. Okay, so kind of makes sense. All right, but but again, we're gonna we're gonna do some different stuff. Right. So what we're gonna do? We want to do a cumulative thing here. Okay. Um, all right. So we want to look at. Uh, What's the cumulative effect of all of these things? Um, so, so one thing we can do is, uh, I think you can actually do a cumulative sum in, uh, is there like a cumulative sum? That's in MATLAB. Nah, okay, whatever. Um, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so but but we can do uh, the the cumulative output growth. Okay, so so what does this mean? What we're gonna do is, is basically it's gonna be the you can think about it in two ways. One is like we're gonna look at you know what in, if we're looking at you know 1951, how much higher is the log output than 1950? And we're gonna for 1961 64 same thing. How much higher is log output in 64? The 1950. So basically, we're using 50 as our zero base year and looking at cumulative changes effects from uh, in output. We're going to do that for each of these. Okay. So um, all right. So so what does that mean? So here, um, let's copy what 1950 log output is. We're going to look at uh, B2 minus that base year of 6.3 that I copied. Okay. This should be zero. There's a little thing called floating point arithmetic, which means it's like, you know, one times 10 to the minus 10 computers can't get it exactly. Okay. It's zero. Okay. And then we extrapolate. Okay. So now you might ask, why didn't I just do like B2 minus B2 and then extrapolate that? Then it would extrapolate the second one, which we don't want to extrapolate. Okay. And it would just give you zero for everything. Okay. So you have to copy it. That's the only sort of pain point is that you have to copy it manually. So you take the zero point capital and say, you know, C2 minus that zero point for capital. Okay, and that one actually for various other reasons comes out exactly zero, it's sort of random, okay. So on, and you extrapolate like that, okay. Um, now, 
there's one one additional thing is that when we, we want to look at we want to look at the the effect of capital okay this is this is cumulative capital if we want to look at the effect of capital we need to multiply this by that capital share so i'm going to put on another factor of 0.38 okay and then i'm going to extrapolate that down okay so this is really what we're looking this is the cumulative contribution so it's 0.38 the capital share times sort of the cumulative growth in every cell okay that's cumulative capital cumulative employment and cumulative tfp okay so i'm going to do the same thing so remember for output there's no weight it's just it's just the, the cumulative growth and output for capital you have the 0.38 capital share weight for labor you're going to have the 0.62 labor share and then tfp that has that has a one weight too right if you look at here you know like basically this you know this has a one this is tfp has a one output has a one output tfp has a one capital has alpha which is 0.38 labor has one minus alpha it's 0.62 or you can even think about it here so the, we need to put those weights on okay so then cumulative employee copy the base here that's 0 0.62 times v2 minus base year value okay which again always is going to be zero that first year and then it's going to grow hopefully grow uh thereafter okay and then finally uh still wait for it. yeah I got, I'm, I'm getting i'm getting there so so what i did there just a second ago was copy this base year for employment and then uh look at the difference between each one of these and that base year so it starts at zero and then grows over time okay and then finally tfp copy that um that's going to be e2 the actual value minus the base year value which is 2.59 okay and then extrapolate that okay so now we really have what we were looking for all along which is this cumulative effect of capital of employment and of tfp and then with these appropriate alpha and one minus alpha weights okay because that that controls how important they are for actually improving output if you increase capital by one percent or like ten percent then you increase output by 3.8 percent okay if you increase uh, labor by 10 percent you increase output by 6.2 percent okay that's the 0.38 and 0.62 that's that that maps from their actual growth into their effect on output okay all right so now we can take the we can plot these things okay the cumulative uh, contributions from these three uh factors capital employment tfp so just insert chart they'll figure it out Okay, so this is pretty good. So we're going to call this you know, growth decomposition USA. All right, um, and let's make. Let's, I think if we maximize, yeah. So you can get a little more like actually seeing stuff here. Okay, so now you can see um, basically what's happening. You know, uh, so we're really accumulated. Almost always goes up. As long as there's positive growth in this thing, it goes up. Obviously, that doesn't always happen in a recession, for instance, it goes down. So you can see in 2008, uh, employment, boom, went actually went down, which is which is exceptional. Uh, TFP goes down a bit. Uh, capital almost never decreases. That relates to the, the potential measurement error, okay? And then you can also see, you can start to see a little bit of a story here as you go along the decades, which is basically that, you know, 50s and 60s were pretty good. Big rapid industrialization. Um, uh, Post-war, a lot of science and technology, space race, spillovers in the private sector, and so on. Yeah, up until basically 68 was the moon landing and everything. So pretty good for that, those two decades. I think that's well well acknowledged. Kind of what, basically right there at 68, then you kind of see this flat region. The 70s were not great in terms of TFP. Okay, so TFP is, I'm, I'm thinking as like a, a main factor and driving force. TFP kind of, you can see there's a slower rate of growth in the 70s and kind of like 83, which happens to be the year I was born. Uh, things pick up again. Um, good timing for me. Um, and, you know, goes up. They look pretty good. I guess they look not quite as good as 50s and 60s, but pretty good, you know. There's a little bit of a blip in 2000 and then like 2008 happens. Okay, so... Um, 
that's the basic story. And it's consistent with, you know, like the 70s, there was this sort of malaise, stagnation and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of um, international turmoil. There's like a lot of like terrorism, hijackings, all sorts of stuff, like every year, every month. Um, uh, oil crises of various sorts. Okay. Um, Vietnam, everything like it just, it was a bad time. Okay. So um, that kind of makes sense. Uh, and then sort of like internet computer technology, I think probably is part of this trend here. Just like a, just, we just happen to stumble into like a new era for technology. Okay. And I think that, that was a good thing uh, in a lot of ways. Um, and it certainly seemed to have helped TFP. Okay. And then it's just like a bunch of stuff happened after that. So, so like, you know, I don't know if it's just, I don't know if you can purely attribute it to the recession per se. Uh, it might've been that there was sort of bad technological stuff that contributed to the, the recession. Seems like the lines are diverging over time. Yeah. Um, that's, that's possible. So, so part of it is built in because we're looking at a cumulative sum. It's like, if you think of like a random walk, things will diverge. Okay. But yeah, so, so the, there, there will be some natural divergence because we're looking, you know, year to year, you get, you, you, you add on a new value <clears throat> and that you might get divergence there and there's no force necessarily pushing them back together. Okay. So you, you'd expect a little bit of divergence, but also I think, um, you know, the, maybe that is reflective. You know what it's probably is, is, uh, you know, the, the employment, think about what's going on in the point. So what I told, what I said about TFP, kind of like that's, that's like a baseline. Okay. And capital up until kind of like here in somewhere in here, there's a bit of a divergence, but largely goes in line with TFP, right? So remember we talked about how, you know, you have a, you have TFP growth and that induces a change in capital. So you'd expect capital to move when TFP moves because there's more output to invest and and it's more productive to invest it okay so um that and then there's a little bit of divergence here that happens in the 90s okay where tfb goes up but capital doesn't go up as much i don't actually know part of that might be mismeasurement okay so this capital is uh it depends you know what is capital is it a machine do you include intellectual property intellectual capital ideas uh patents and all of that that's a big question and that this is a time when there was an immense run up in in knowledge capital in software in the late 90s and stuff like that and it might just be that we didn't measure that correctly cuz software used to be classified as a service you know it's like i want to have a spreadsheet so google provided this service of a spreadsheet in my browser okay so you could kind of think about it like that but really google wrote a bunch of code uh, to create this spreadsheet in the back end and that was an a, a a type of capital investment, knowledge capital investment. So, um, and maybe that got mismeasured. So, so up until recently, it, it was classified as services software, but then they re reclassified it. But I don't know if they did that perfectly. Okay, so part of that, this divergence that happens in the nineties, may be reflective of that. Okay, um, so would it be uh, interesting possible for the lines to converge over time. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it it's something you may expect. Okay, and with at least with with capital and TFP, you you might expect even there's a force, an economic force pushing them together. Um, so so yeah, you could almost imagine this. the The question is whether this is real or a mis, an issue of mismeasurement. If it's mismeasurement, that you, maybe you fix the measurement and then you'd actually retroactively change this. Okay, in which case maybe you wouldn't see it. Um, if it was real, if there was some divergence going on here for another reason. Um, which would be like um, a systematic reduction in the savings and investment rate, even independent of TFP. Um, that you know that's going to be happening for for other reasons. So uh, a lot of that is is demographics. So when you're middle aged like me, uh, you know you save because you want to. You know, you want to have that savings for the future, but then once you get old, you start spending it. Okay, so U.S. has a has a, a low nowadays has a pretty low savings rate and hence a low investment rate. Uh, that might also be it might be a demographic trend. If you look at the the fraction of older people in the populace, it goes up around this time as well. So that might be a thing. So if we return eventually, you you can't keep getting old forever. I think. Um, 
uh, as a society, right? Um, so uh, maybe that those demographic forces go the other way eventually, or they stabilize, and so this would kind of stabilize. Okay, so that's that's another thing you could imagine. Um, as for population, this is that. Well, so this is employment. This is also kind of that demographic thing. Um, you know, I mean, population grows for many reasons, not all of which are purely just like TFP or economic. Okay, uh, so here, this is the fact that this line is is bending downwards over time means the growth rate of population is slowing and or the growth rate of employment is slowing some of that is probably coming from the growth rate of population slowing down over time uh which which is a demographic trend which generally it's, it's largely a, a societal factors uh career factors things like that as women enter the, la the labor force it becomes harder to um do both at the same time, right? So that's gonna affect things. And that's also sort of related to the the, the fact that when you look at uh, uh, birth rates by income, higher income people have fewer children and so on. So um, a lot of stuff going on there, pretty interesting too. Um, and so that's gonna be a factor here. And then also on top of that, that's the, the population part, but the employment, remember employment is population times the fraction of people that are working. So fraction of people that are working, that's another demographic thing in terms of age. Uh, Old, you know, if there's just a larger fraction of older people, this is going to, the employment is going to look lower. Okay. It's going to be lower. Okay. So, so that's also probably part of this it's slowing down the growth rate of population and less people working as a fraction due to retirement basically. Okay. Um, and so that's, that's that orange line, you know, anything could happen. Probably it's not going to, the population rate's not going to go up a lot. I don't think, I mean, especially now. Um, so uh, and then the employment fraction, probably similar. So I, I expect that to be kind of a permanent thing, at least for the next few decades. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of my, my take on that. You know, are these going to converge? Probably not for the orange, maybe for the blue. Okay. So, um, okay. So, all right. So that, that's, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a reasonable, you know, that's, I think a good thing. It was a good final result for like one, a, right. So you can see here are the cumulative uh, effects. Here's how they change over time. Here's how they relate to stuff that we know about the country and what's been happening. Okay. So probably the case that assuming they have good data, uh, the stuff looks kind of more dynamic or more interesting for other countries. Okay. Um, because there's just kind of more, um, especially, I mean, if you go, if you go to lower income countries, uh, you get more political and other types of volatility and more things happen. Okay. So there might be more big movements too. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. So that, that's, that's okay. That was, that was, that took a while. Okay. That's, so that's one a, okay. Um, for one, for one B. Okay. Um, I would, so, so like I was saying last, uh, before, okay, where am I going here? Let's go over here. So let's go to the, I can't say, so for one B, so, so, so one B you put in human capital and do everything again and see how it changes. Essentially like here, you're kind of combining human capital into Z. Once you split it out, then you can see the separate effects of actual technology and human capital. Okay, so that's that could be interesting. Now for part two, I, for, I forgot that Beyond GDP doesn't actually have a time series for those metrics. So what I would do is first talk about the metrics in Beyond GDP, which would be for all those different factors, what's the level today of, of like welfare compared to like the US say? Um, and then, and then also, what's the growth rate from 1970 to today in those factors, say, compared to the U.S. Uh, or not? Okay, so um, talk about that. That's still important. Okay, you can you can generate some of what Jones has from uh, the Penn World Tables data. Okay, so if you head it over here, go back to the website and go to our slides. Okay. Welfare analysis. Reference the slides. Okay. Go in a little bit. Okay. Remember, we, we derived all this stuff where you can get these welfare numbers. Okay. In particular, like you can do this. Remember, we added in leisure. Okay. And uh, calculated that welfare metric. If you just look at the difference between uh, in log consumption between, say, your country and the US and uh, uh, leisure. Okay. So that from, once you have average hours worked, 
you can get leisure. Okay, so if, if you say there's, you could work at most two thousand hours a year, and your uh, country is working a thousand hours a year, that means they're working half the time and they're taking leisure half the time. Okay, so that would be like 0.5. So you can plug those in here. Okay, and then we 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 go in how to estimate eta in the notes in the next slide basically. Here, it, you can just use eta equals two basically, um, and you so you can do this this first type of analysis with consumption and leisure. That's fine. Okay, if you want to do that, go for it. Just plug everything in and logify it. Multiply by the appropriate weights. It's going to be similar to what we did before. You'll get these welfare metrics, the log lambda. Okay, that's that's a good start. Okay, um, if you want to go to the World Bank and get life expectancy data, you know, go for it. Um, but but you don't have to. Okay, um, yeah. So that's that. But that's going to look pretty similar. Okay, you just need to follow kind of follow the welfare metrics in the slides as they are, and then just look at how that's changing over time in that for your country. Okay. Um, okay, and then uh, yeah, for inequality, you mean the World Bank has inequality. You don't have to go. Don't go too crazy on number three. Just just talk about how how find some inequality data for your country it could be just like you know what was it in 1970 what was it today and talk about how that's changing and how that's related to political historical events okay so um all right so then um yeah and then the other thing is like uh i guess i only have about 10 minutes left okay so uh let me show you let me show you some other stuff that i wanted to like point out um and I'll just, I'm just going to do this in Python because it's, I have to like mess around with spreadsheets a little less. I can just kind of move more quickly. Okay. Um, you know, don't worry about the code too much. I mean, you can, I'll, I'll, I can post the notebook after the assignments through if you want to check it out. Okay. But, but this is just so I can calculate stuff more quickly. Okay. So for Python, okay. This is Python notebook. Okay. So I'm just going to like, you just run code and it like, defines variables for you. I've already written the code. Okay, so, um, and yeah, so so all this is doing is loading in that Excel file, PWT91, okay, just get the USA data. You can see the same thing, basically. It's just a spreadsheet inside a variable in Python. Okay, same data though. Um, and then you can look at stuff so you can calculate that labor share. Okay, so here's that labor share that I said that people were writing papers about it going from 64 to 59% over over the years okay this actually moves around much more for other countries okay for for even for like france it moves around a ton okay um all right and you can do you can do kind of the same analysis okay so just kind of i'm gonna i'm gonna run through i'm not gonna discuss the code that much but it's relatively straightforward and i'll just show you the graphs okay so here um make it bigger too let's see you don't need all that though all right, so here you can see um, this is that that you know the same graph basically that we saw. It's just different colors: TFP, capital, and, and employment share. Okay, it's just doing it in Python. Um, this is this is what you'll get if you do that human capital component. So all I did was add, I just add in that HC variable here. You give it a one minus alpha weight because it's also um, it's also got a one minus alpha. Uh, coefficient uh, exponent okay and then you do the same basic analysis okay and here you can see for the US remember in the first in part a okay in part a what you see as Z as TFP is basically the combination of TFP and human capital in some sense and what we're doing going to part B is splitting that up into truly what is TFP and what is human capital so this we should see that capital that capital share in green is the same and it looks pretty similar and that the employment share in red is similar and they, they are the, the the scales are a little bit switched uh shifted but um they're the same lines okay what's different is that this this blue tfp share um is now split into the true tfp share and human capital okay and so essentially so like there's some human capital growth and that's that's taking a bite out of blue okay um and so then you can see what 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 does that mean? I mean the big thing that that changes if you look at human capital, cumulative growth in logs. Big stuff happens between sixty and eighty, basically. Okay, so in six between sixty and eighty, a lot of people 
got a little more education. Uh, high school completion rates go up. College attendance, rate, attendance rates go up. I mean, they've been going up for a while. They're not super high still um, in some sense, uh, but they, they go up, right? Uh, what that does, though, is because human capital is going up, what you attribute to TFP actually gets lower, right? So you can see in, this, in the 60s and 70s before, like really like 65 until 83, okay? Uh, it used to be that this was like a slight increase, and now it's just dead flat nothing happened for TFP there, okay? So that's a bit of a more stark story about the, the late 60s and 70s. Uh, Vietnam and like disco apparently just like, that was it, all right, they couldn't take it. Um, and then things pick up again, kind of more suddenly in the, as a result in the 80s. And then the two, like the two, you know, basically 2008 onwards, 2006 probably is, is relatively slow. So you, you see actually the TFP story gets more stark there's like the flatter regions are flatter and the steeper regions are a little steeper. Okay. Uh, and there's basically these four eras of growth, growth, no growth, growth, not great growth. Okay. So that's, that's the basic story there. Okay. And then, um, yeah. And then, so to the last few minutes, let me just show you what you, what you'll get. So you can do, of course you can do all of this in Excel. All right. Um, so it's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's in some sense more difficult, but also quicker to do in Python on that. So, so, you know, probably, you know, something to, to, to do eventually, I think it's a, it's a good thing to do eventually in your life, but maybe not exactly right now. Okay. Um, so, uh, here we're just saying, okay, we're going to have eight equals two and we're computing, you know, take average hours worked and divide by. This is, you know, this is 16 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, the max you could possibly ever work, basically. Uh, so basically everything but sleep, okay? Attribute that to leisure. Everything but sleep and work, we're attributing to leisure. Um, and then we're calculating these, these ratios, the lambda stuff, okay? If you do that for the US, okay, you're gonna get, um, you get an overall lambda, okay? And then it, it, kind of sim similar to what would be on GP, you have, um, output, okay. Uh, this so this is welfare. Remember, you have output. Then you you have to account for the fact that only a certain fraction of output is consumed, okay. And then you add in leisure, okay. So it's like Norway produces a ton, they consume a relatively low fraction, okay. So that, that kind of stuff, and then also leisure, okay. For the U.S., I mean, it's all output. See, this this is not covery. It's C over Y. Uh, so that lambda. Uh, coefficient sort of the savings rate not too much happening there okay leisure maybe a little better but not too much okay and then basically everything about the u.s is just output we don't really change that much we just kind of make more stuff and consume it so you know um okay so that's that's maybe that's probably more interesting for other countries okay hopefully norway i would think would be at least different the, the cutter, the, the UAEs of the world, okay, the oil producing states, um, probably different, okay. Okay, um, the other thing we can do is, this is just the same exact graph, but looking at differences. So this is like growth rates, rather than cumulative, we're doing growth rates, okay. So just take the, the, the slope of this line, okay. This looks a lot messier and noisier, but you can, you can see a little bit more what's happening from year to year. Okay, so, and you can see how variable things are, too. Um, so here you can see, you can see some interesting things. So for one thing, uh, is a clear negative correlation between blue and the green red. So there's a clear negative correlation between output and these other two uh, savings stuff and leisure stuff. Okay, so when, when uh, let's look at 08. That's the biggest blip. Output goes way down. Um, sorry, consumption consumption goes up as a fraction of output because people are, you know, people make less money, but they still need to eat and live. So basically the consumption share goes up and they invest, they save less. Okay. They also take more leisure in the sense that they are probably unemployed in a lot of cases. And so they, there's more leisure time. Okay. So you see that whereas in good times, <clears throat> say, uh, early two thousands, much of the nineties, uh, lower leisure. Okay. You're working more, uh, you're consuming less, saving more. Okay, possibly saving, you know, it's good times, you might want to save for the future precautionarily. Okay, um, so that's that's sort of in line with kind of, you know, macro intuition. 
Okay. Um, yeah, and then this is just, I don't know, overall lambda. I mean, I don't know, maybe we should look at the change in lambda difference. This is just the sum of all of these series, looking at everything combined. And then you can see like, you know, I mean, it's, it's it reflects what we saw before in output is that, you know, uh, the, the sort of the late 90s, early 2000s were a good time, a big recession, things kind of recovered after that um, until now. And then similar sort of stuff going on here. So uh, it's mostly reflecting what's what's happening on the output side. OK, so um, yeah, so that's why you can do that in Python. If you, if you want to check it out um, uh, or if you want to have any tips on, on, on looking at Python or R, I'm happy to help. With that too, uh, you can do everything in Excel and that, that requires a little bit less kind of upfront investment um, to do. Okay, so uh, yeah. Now, I think that's that's pretty much it for, for going over the homework, okay? Um, I guess, uh, so let's, let's do on Monday, April 13th on Blackboard, okay? Um, yeah, so, you know, uh, let me know if you have any other questions on that and have to meet, talk about it. Um, or anything like that. Uh, so upload the notebook. Yeah, you want me to? I'll upload. I'll upload this notebook. This one here. Uh, I'll put this notebook to the course website, so you can you know you can use this as a starting point if you wanna if you wanna do some Python stuff. Okay, and all you, basically all you have to do is to run this stuff is is replace USA with whatever your country code is, and that that'll that'll do it. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Uh, so I'll see you guys next week. All right, and uh, have a good weekend, and I'll, I'll uh, hang out, hang out in the chat for a bit if you have any more questions. Okay, thanks.